Hi, my name is London, and we are going to be studying Picasso. This is lesson number three. Enjoy! Hello, welcome again. It's Daryl. Um, hopefully you're going to enjoy this lesson just as much as the other two. We are going to be studying Picasso, as London has said. This is my assistant, London. She's my granddaughter. And so we're only going to need a couple supplies. The one thing you're going to use some paper. You can use construction paper, or you can use computer paper, or you can use lined paper, whatever you chose. And then you'll need a marker. And I got Sharpies. But um, you don't have to use a Sharpie. You can use a crayon, or you can use just a pencil. And then we have chalk pastels. And you can use regular sidewalk chalks. We could use... Maybe uh, some crayons? Yeah, crayons. Crayons, okay. All right, so, or even paints. You could even paint it. So this is just an example of what you could do. Watercolor. Um, watercolor would work too. All right. right. Are you ready? Yep. Okay, let's, let's go ahead and get started then. Okay, so this is kind of a fun project that, uh, that is abstract. So in other words, you're not going to know what it's going to look like until we're finished. All right, so got your Sharpie. Oh, don't do anything until I say something. London's done this before, so she, she knows what it's going to look like. So here we go. So we're going to start with an X at the top. Okay. And go ahead, we're going to go ahead and put an X at the bottom right here, too. Okay. Okay. I'm going to do it off to the side a little bit so people can see what you're doing. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a line, and we're going to do it a little differently this time, okay? So we're going to do a line from here all the way here, and I'm going to leave some room over here, okay? All right, so it looks like a backwards C. Either one, it doesn't matter. Okay. 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 There we go. And then we're going to do one more line. We're going to go from the top. We're going to do a straight line and then three bumps. One, two, three. And Linda, is it okay that yours doesn't look just like mine? Uh-huh. Why is that okay? Because each painting has their own style. And what does that mean if each painting has their own style? That means it it could be mine and it could be yours. That's right. Picasso had his own style. And also, um, we have our own style. And speaking of Picasso, let me go ahead and show you just a little bit of some of his work so that you know why we're doing this. So Picasso thought that every child was an artist, and I truly believe this. There's only one, ray, one wrong way to do art, and what's that? It's to not do it. That's right. It's not to do it. Okay, and so Picasso was born in 1881. That was hundreds of years ago. And um, those are some of his sayings. It says, I do not seek, I find. And um, others have seen what is and ask why. I have seen what could be and asked why not. Um, he had a really, really, really long name. He had 25 words in his name. It's Pablo, Diego, Jose, Francisco, De Paula, Juan, uh, I can't even say all of those names, but there's 23 of them. 23 thought, of them. I thought you said 20. Oh, right. 23. Three, 23 words. And in his name. 25 words. Okay. Here's an example of one of his paintings. Um, he did not paint like everybody else, and everybody thought his paintings were weird, but then all of a sudden they started liking him and he got really famous. Oh, he put a, a, a nose on the side and an eyeball on the side. And this is kind of what we're doing today is we're doing something that's not regular. And again, here's another one and another one. And here's Picasso actually working on a very, very large piece that had to do with war. It was very political. And again, another piece. So I just wanted to give you an idea of what kind of things Picasso would make. He was a very, very talented artist. Um, these are some of his sketches and drawings. And he believed that um, your first try was your best. So in other words, don't keep doing the same thing over and over and over. It's always your first one is the purest. This is a contour drawing like we did yesterday with the hand where you started on one um, line and kept on going until the end. So this is very interpretive. And again, he was a very, very famous and very talented artist. Okay, so let's go ahead and get back to our drawing. Here we go. So we've done that so far. 
I'd like you to make kind of an S shape right here. I'd like you to make an S like that. Kind of like a two. It does look like a two, you're right. Not an S. Okay, there we go. I'd like you to make another line for me. I'd like you to make a line up here that almost looks like a tongue. Good job, Linda. Make sure you, there you go. And let's go ahead and make another line. And let's make a line going from here all the way around here. I want you to tuck it in and I want you to give it a bump. Okay, so. All the way around, tuck it in and make a bump. There we go. And I want you to make a point on the end there. Perfect. Okay. Now let's go ahead and make A smile there. A line here. A line here. Let's go ahead and put kind of a bird on the top of that line. Okay. Let's go ahead and put another happy face over here. Okay. Let's go ahead and we're going to make Oh, I made a mistake, but that's okay. All right, let's go ahead and make a circle there. And a circle here. And a circle there. And a circle there. And then you can kind of start to see that it's taking effect now, isn't it? All right, so let's go ahead and we're gonna make a line going from here all the way around here, and we're not gonna to touch it. Yep. Now I already make a mis made a mistake from the last one, and it's okay, because I kind of like what, what's happening with this one. So let's go ahead and make a line here, and a line there. Let's put a dot right here. It's almost become magical. It's starting to look like something. Let's go ahead and put a one, two, three there. And a one, two, three there. And let's put one more upside down bird right there, or a W, I guess you'd call it. W? Uh-huh. But not with straight edges. Right, round. with round edges, yes, a, a lowercase W. Okay. And what happens is we are going to turn this around, and look, it's magical. It turns into a person. It turns into a person. So now we're going to start adding some color. And I've got our chalk pastels. And like I said, you can use sidewalk chalks. You can use crayons. You can use paints. You can use whatever you want. But I'm going to show you a special technique that's going to go with yeah, chalk pastels. Okay. So like, if you do blue, like right here, and you do purple right here. I'll do purple up here and blue right there. Got it. I'm kind okay. of going to copy you, but just like opposite. Got it. Opposite. All right, so we're going to use a tissue. We're going to wrap our finger around our tissue. Kind of like put a little dress on our finger. <laughs> and there's one way to use the chalk pastels, and that is to just take your finger and rub them. And what happens is, see, you get some color on your pastels. So let's go ahead, and I'm not gonna do the lips because lips are, are red. We're going to choose different colors that really aren't normal. So let's go, I'm gonna just put some red up here. Okay, I'll do it on the opposite. You're gonna do it on the bottom? You're gonna do opposite? Yeah. Okay. Or on the other side. Oh, well, that would work. So I'm just filling in some of my space with some color. So now I'm going to switch over to blue. What happens when you add blue and, and red together, London? They turn purple. They turn purple. So I'm going to go ahead and add some blue up here. Ooh, I kind of like that. Okay, another way to use the chalk pastels is to use your tissue, again, 
But now what's going to happen is we're going to be using the side of the chalk. And so I'm going to use the side part. So I'm going to color it with the side. Yeah, yeah. And then you're going to move the color around with your tissue, with your finger again. And you're going to move the color around. And you can mix colors, like I want this to be a lighter green, so I'm going to put some yellow on it. And you're just going to move, you don't need much color on there, you're going to move the color around with your chalk. So I'll show you what a finished product looks like. It should look like that, but not the same. Not the same, because why? This is mine. And this is mine. Right. So what I want you to notice is I didn't paint the lips red, and I didn't paint the eyes blue, and I didn't paint the, paint the face, I mean, color the face uh, tan or brown. Um, I used different kinds of colors, and that's what you're supposed to do. So London, you keep on going. And I'm going to pause it for a minute to let you guys get an idea of, um, not an idea, but to give you guys a chance to, to do what you want to do. I'm going to pause it and we'll come back to you. Okay, we're back and we kind of put some more color on there. But what I want to show you is we put some background color on there. If you want to start doing your details, you don't have to rub the details in. Like I'm doing the eyes yellow. And the, yeah, and the outside of the eyes. Maybe I'll do the eyelids, one color. And so, yes, I can rub maybe the, eyelid, the eyelids in. London's really creative over here. You can mix colors together. There's one other thing I want to show you, too, is that you can put some details by not rubbing them. So, for instance, I can maybe put like a, a cheek on there, like a spiral. And I'm not going to rub that in. I think, London, on your last one, you put a heart on one side, and that looked kind of cool. So let's say I want to make her lips purple. I'm going to put some blue on there and some red. And then I would rub it together and it would give me purple. I'm just doing the whole look. Huh? I'm just doing the whole look. Yeah. I would, I would highly suggest staying away from like the black and the brown because I think that that would probably take over your, your masterpiece. You can also use the, the white to kind of blend colors too. That's what a lot of people do with the, um, with the pastels. This is just a really fun project. When you finally think you're finished, what's a really cool way to preserve it is to use um, you can buy some real expensive um, sealer from your Hobby Lobby. No. Or you can go ahead and you can use, um, I'm doing orange. You can use, uh, what's it called? A hairspray. You can do hairspray and spray it and that will hold all the chalk. It'll ch keep the chalk from smearing. Or crayon. Or crayon, yeah. But you don't need to, to make the crayon stop. So, London, what do you think? You got one more spot right here to color in. Oh, oh. Okay. One more spot. And of course, an artist is never finished until you do what? Sign. You've got to sign your masterpiece. And London has. I know. There <laughs> you go. Go ahead and sign your masterpiece. London has her own signature. And. Voila, your Picasso masterpiece is finished. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.